Hi everyone, I'm going to share 10 tips about cleaning hordes after a death. So as you know, one of my true grit life experiences deals with hoarding. Both of my parents passed away within 10 months of each other and there was over 20 plus years of hoarding left for sorting. I am sharing this in hopes of helping others through this process. The basement was packed close to the ceiling and there was barely a path. I don't have pictures of that. It was just too challenging to capture. The main floor of the house and the garage were heaped with a tiny path as well. The paths were not enough space to get a stretcher or a wheelchair through for emergencies. So I didn't also have a crew of 50 plus like on the TV show. It was uh, mainly a few friends that had helped me for a few hours and me. It took me about two and a half years to complete. I quickly learned that there was a method that worked best for me to be efficient, effective, and productive. So I'm going to share that with you. First and foremost, remember that there is always a cost to moving inventory more than once. So the cost can mean your time, available space, or white noise cluttering your mental space. This can affect your clarity to make decisions and prolong the whole process. Some supplies you will need, packing knives, scissors, cardboard boxes, labels, big black marker or blackout stamp, shredder, trash bins, bags, dumpster, clock, timer, cleaning supplies, also a sorting table to easily begin grouping items versus digging through boxes one piece at a time. Your mental state. Be emotionally and mentally prepared to make difficult decisions regarding your sorting. You cannot sort when you are feeling hungry, tired, emotional, or sentimental. Be in a positive state of mind. For example, I would put on my workout clothes and tennis shoes to lift my spirits and energy. Many emotions will come up as you're sifting through the items, such as sadness, grief, anger, confusion, overwhelmingness, helplessness, and you'll think that the task will never end, but it will end. It may just take longer than you think, so be patient. If you break down in tears, start throwing things or scream to the skies, it may be time to just take a break from it. Come back later. Time, allocating plenty of time to sort through the items. Some days you'll make more progress than others, so be prepared for that. Other days you may be tired and you'll make poor decisions. So it's best to allocate a certain amount of dedicated time and stick to that. So I worked on decluttering Monday through Thursday from about 6 p.m. after work and then visiting my mom. After 10 p.m. I didn't make the best decisions and for the most part was sluggish for work the next day if I stayed later. Also, old memories might come up that you may um, think about and they may impact your sleep. Something you need to keep in mind. You may want to quit early if you are sorting sensitive things to ensure less disruption of your sleep. Trash disposal. You want to get a large trash container. I actually had to get three rounds of dumpsters because the hoard was like I said, so huge. Contractor trash bags might be needed. You want to remove any food products and packaging first to avoid any unwanted smells. Clean the fridge and freezer and sink with any dirty dishes. Address any rodents or infestations of any kind if possible. So next, sorting. Create appropriate bins and boxes. So here are some of my examples. Assessing trash. What does this really mean? Do you need a dumpster? Garbage bags, metal recycling crew, what? A shred and burn. You wanna take care of sensitive items for identity control. I mentioned this because my grandma's identity was stolen and she had passed away for many years previous, but those items were not shredded in the beginning of the cleanup. Consider also what to do with old bills, financial records, magazine subscriptions, which have all the information on there. All of that can be stolen. Use a large Sharpie marker or a blackout stamping device, especially with old medication bottles. Please don't forget those. For larger blocks of information, rip the page off, shred it, have a box of shredding, purchase a shredder or take it to a shredding location. Donate. Keep in mind that some donation organizations 
do not take certain items like metal cabinets, mattresses. Some will only pick up once a month, others more frequently. Ask for those details when you call initially. Get a calendar going so that you can have items ready for pickup and not forget. So Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and you can meet at the police department or a busy parking lot for safety. For larger items, you can leave them outside so you do not have to have a stranger in your home and risk your safety. Vintage and specialty items, you may be able to sell as a bundle or a box on Etsy, eBay, or, or other places. Miscellaneous sewing items could be donated to a nursing home, especially elastic to modify residents' clothing. So there were volunteers that altered my mom's pants for free out of kindness. Another category is keep. Here are some subcategories of keep. Supplies, holidays, photos, sewing and crafts, tools, clothing. Initially, you may have to keep things general and meticulously organize what you are keeping at a later date. However, if you can separate more than just one category at a time, please consider this and execute it appropriately. As a side note, I was unaware that my family had over 3,700 photos, slides, and 8 millimeter video that I may do a separate video on regarding the organization of that. Low hanging fruit. Grab the simple things that can be placed in the trash or require no sorting. Clear a path to safely walk if there is not one already. Shed light on the subject. So replace light bulbs. Bring in lamps and lights so you can see and assess what you're dealing with. Not buy organizers until you have some of the spaces cleared. Just use cardboard boxes at first. You don't wanna waste your money and change your mind. Plan. Set any discovered organizers to the side until you have a plan. Do not throw out plastic, wooden, or sturdy organizers until you have identified and decided that they will not be of good use to you. Safety. So I know this sounds silly, but please don't use open flames to sort. <laughs> Use other light sources and be careful of their heat that they are generating. Pets and children can get easily lost or injured in the clutter. There may be mental distress because they don't understand hoarding. Sometimes it's hard enough for us adults to understand it, to be honest. You definitely want to make sure the doors are locked when you are working, especially if you're working late. You don't want to have people surprise you and just walk in. So for instance, my neighbors felt it was fine for them to just walk in. Gardening, out outdoor tools, sheds, large appliances, hazardous items. So this may require a special call to the trash pickup, a metal recycling crew, lists on um, ad platforms like Craigslist, etc. Coins and currency. Place those in a box until you're finished with all of the sorting and then find a reputable place to give you a bid and advice. Books and magazines. You may be able to sell some of them, but some you may be donating to nursing homes, maybe Goodwill. However, I hate to say it, but most of them may go in the recycle or be tossed. Passing down items to family and friends as a legacy. So you may want to make a list and take photos to send to others interested in a bit of history. You should think through a strategy and has open communication and it doesn't offend if possible and is fair. Bonus, I do have a few boxes left that need sorting and I could demonstrate my process if you would find that helpful. Comment below if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to place those below and I will be happy to hear your story or help with any questions. So stay strong and together we can succeed.